So, well, hi there. This is another project from me. It's a long wave transmitter. Uh, some years ago, I think it was some years ago, I've already made long wave transmitter. And there were actually even some people rebuilding it. And even some people were writing comments about it. And what I've read in the comment was, amazing transmitter, awesome transmitter, but the transmission range is way too low. It just goes two feet or so and 60 centimeters. It's way too low. And therefore I made this new circuit here. It's the high power, if you want to call it like that, covers at least for sure one room uh, long wave transmitter. And it's built in two units. As you can see, we have the audio section here and the RF section over here. And here's the physical construction of the transmitter. And I, as you can see, there's also a voltage meter. I will get to that soon. So first of all is the big filtering capacitor on the input. This one will reduce hum if you are using a cheap, uh, unstabilized wall plug power supply. It will reduce the hum of the transmitter because I've seen some videos about other transmitters and people were having problems with hum on the transmitter. And this one should pretty much fix it. Here we have our 555 timer oscillator with the 10k potentiometer you can get over the complete long wave band. It even goes a little bit further because I was too lazy to fiddle out the exact values for this capacitor and this resistor. But it does for sure cover 150 kilohertz up to 290 kilohertz in the long wave band. The output from our timer IC from pin 3 goes to a class C amplifier made with the BC548B standard NPN transistor. You can also use a 2 in 3 9 4 here. Probably I haven't tested it but I'm sure it works. Then we get our first tank circuit here, which pretty much has just the uh, job to filter out the harmonics on the medium wave band. Um, and then we have our second tank circuit here, which matches the antenna. And the 5 to 90 picofarads tuning capacitor, this one here, I've written must be good. That means it must withstand some high voltage. I'm using a 250 volts type and it seems to take it, it seems not to fail. I've, I've When developing this type of circuits, I've had it that a capacitor, a tuning capacitor failed, the insulation failed, the plastic melted or something like that because uh, if you add too much power between this and this spot, you will get high voltage, 500 volts or even 1 kilovolt. And these capacitors usually take uh, 100 volts, 250 volts, depending on them. You can use a really big capacitor, physically big capacitor, and it will take more voltage. But uh, I've designed it so it should take the voltage. If you use a 250 volt set, it should take it, but I'm not guaranteeing for it. You're building it, as you can see, on your own risk. So um, for antenna, I'm using a 1 meter 50 wire or 4.5 feet long wire. And for ground, I'm using a water pipe. You can also use a really long wire there. Or you can connect it probably to earth connection from your mains uh, plug. But do this on own risk. And I haven't tested it if, if, if it works. Just try it if you want. Um, OK, here I wrote RF. That means that this is the RF radio frequency section. And especially for beginners, important information. Keep this short. Keep all leads as short as you can. No long leads, especially from the potentiometer, no long leads here or here, because they will act as an antenna. And the signal that is transmitted from our actual antenna then goes into the oscillator and will cause some FM. And that means that you will have a distorted audio quality, a bad audio quality. Uh, if you build it properly, you will get a good AM signal. If you build it bad, you will get a a bad F AM signal with FM in it. Although it's very beginner friendly, as you can see, I've just built it on solderless breadboard, but I've taken attention that the wires in the RF section are really short. As you can see, these are the main wires for the RF section, and down here the potentiometer is more or less directly going to the timer IC, and they are all very short. Meanwhile, here on the audio frequency section, it's not so critical, and you can see these long wires here, this is audio section wire, these are not critical. Okay, now let's go to the audio section. We start with our audio preamplifier here, and this is a little bit of a special version of a preamplifier. Um, here we have the 10 nanofarads from base to ground that does reduce the amount of RF that goes in here. So if this antenna is transmitting on 200 kilohertz, this, this transistor will easily pick it up uh, here. And I've had this when developing the circuit, and the result is that you will just hear very, very loud and annoying squeezing sound on the radio. And so put this, I put this capacitor in, and it, it does reduce the RF signal going into the audio amp. Okay, um, there's a 2.2 2 nanofarads capacitor from collector to base. This one's very special. It's an intention, uh, bad audio quality, if you want to call it like that, because if you do not add this capacitor and you add a 20 kilohertz audio signal here, it will transmit the audio signal, the 20 kilohertz signal, uh, although your radio may not uh, reproduce it, but it will take the bandwidth. 
For example, you tune your uh, transmitter to 200 kHz. You're transmitting on 200 kHz, then a 20 kHz signal from music or speech or whatever goes into here without this capacitor, uh, it will mix with the uh, with the carrier signal and we'll, you will see on a spectrum analyze, you would see three uh, signals. 200 kHz, which is your main bar, if you want to call it like that, where your carrier signal is, 180 kHz and 220 kHz, just depending on how the sine wave on the input is. And... That's bad, because if you transmit on 200 kilohertz and, for example, 190 kilohertz is another radio station, you will pretty much interfere and just and make some yeah, interference on the radio station. And that's wherefore I added this capacitor. It will reduce the audio quality. It will re reduce the audio quality to a okay level, to an okay level. But um, on the other side, it will uh, narrow the bandwidth of your transmitter, and you won't interfere with other stations, or you won't interfere with other stations too bad. Okay, here's the here are two resistors. These are very important. First of all, the, the safety resistors. These are simply in for safety. Imagine, for whatever reason, this transistor and this transistor make a dead short. They are shorted. Um, these two TU92 transistors then literally pop. So they explode, they burst the plastic off and whatever, if you have a potent or uh, high power power supply. And that's where these resistors are for. If Even for any reason, if both transistors should fail, just these resistors get warm, the transmitter is not working anymore, but these resistors get warm and nothing will explode or pop. Okay, um, and here's the 47K resistor, the power resistor. This uh, resistor determines how much transmission power the transmitter is actually having. Uh, 47K is really weak transmission power. This transmitter could produce much more transmission power. But on the other side, 47K is a good compromise between uh, uh, the output power and especially the high voltage on this capacitor. Because the main problem you have with this transmitter is this output capacitor here, which must withstand uh, very high voltages. Uh, I've tested it, I've bridged these two resistors, I've taken a 15K here and a high voltage tuning capacitor here that can take the voltage that is there and this transmitter gets really, really strong. I, I haven't measured it, I'm just guessing, but I think it could put out even a half of watt uh, of RF power on the long wave band if you yeah, crank it up, if you want to call it like that. Um, but as I said, this uh, construction here is definitely enough. It does, in my complete room, even three or four meters away uh, from the transmitter with a radio switch to low sensitivity, I get a very clear, very extremely strong signal. Uh, so this is definitely strong enough as I've, de as I've designed it. Um, here's one. You have to connect one with here. This is just for the drawing, as you can see. Here's the MP1, the measuring point one. This is for antenna tuning. So you connect your uh, digital voltage multimeter or your voltage meter or whatever multimeter connect plus here and minus to ground or to zero volts. And then you simply tune the antenna. Short logic. If you tune this tank circuit here to the resonance frequency of your antenna, there's some current flowing into the antenna. If there's some current flowing into the antenna, it's taking out some power of here, which will then result a dropping voltage in here. So now the antenna is mismatched and the transmitter doesn't care about the mismatched antenna. So I'm starting the modulation now with a mismatched antenna and trying to start it. As you can hear, with a mismatched antenna, the signal can be received with the radio. I have to place it that far away because if it's too close to the antenna, it will overload and the modulation will distort really bad. So this is even still a little bit too close, but it's acceptable. However, now I'm going to match the antenna and you will watch the uh, voltage measuring device, the voltage, yeah, voltage probe. It's hard to do with one hand because, okay. Uh, now I'm matching the antenna and you have to watch the voltage. You will see that the voltage is increasing. Oh, it, oh it's bad contact again. Here's, uh, it's a little bit dodgy, the breadboard contact. But as you can see, the voltage is decreasing if it has contact. And now I've matched it. <laughs> I've matched it and we have the lowest voltage here. And the lowest voltage means that the antenna is now tuned to our circuit. If I'm touching the antenna with my hand, if I'm touching it, you will see that the voltage is increasing again because I'm mismatching the antenna. But as you can see, it works. Here's, by the way, the transformer. Two board coils, they are bottoms on each other's coil. That's my RF transformer. Um, okay, now let's start the playback with the matched antenna. And as you can see, it's working pretty well. We have a good modulation quality. Uh, yeah, that's my AM transmitter, a better 
long wave transmitter and I still have a little bit high voltage if I touch the neon light as you can see so this capacitor must be really good. Okay, that's the long wave transmitter. Best regards from Stefan.